Obsidian Gold is a gold exploration company focused on uh, advanced stage projects in, in North America. The keys to success, uh, you know, a lot of companies say it, but uh, I'm going to go through it one more time, is that we've got a dedicated team, uh, we've got a focused strategy, and we've got the right assets in the right place. And I think, it, I think it's the, the team that I just want to focus on quite right now, or just one key member of that team. Um, David Anderson is our CEO and chairman, and he has got a track record, a very envious track record, having been a founding shareholder and uh, CEO of QGX. He sold that for $260 million, uh, and with Antares Gold, uh, having sold that uh, for 650 to First Quantum. So, you know, what separates a company from the, the rest of the pack is having uh, somebody at the helm who has uh, been there, done that, and, and monetized uh, not one but two assets. So that's a very important thing for, for, uh, for our company. Regarding the capitalization of the company, we have $1.75 million cash, 94 million shares outstanding, a market capitalization of approximately about $10 million. Uh, there's a lot of projects to talk about, but there's just not a lot of time to do that. So uh, we're going to focus uh, today on Alaska and in uh, Labrador, and in particular um, uh, our Labrador West Iron Ore project. So let's dive right into it and go straight to Alaska. First project is the Amanita, and it's in a very good position because it's only about four and a half kilometers to the southwest of the Fort Knox gold mine. Uh, Fort Knox is owned by Kinross. It's producing roughly about 380,000 ounces per year. I think this year or last year they had a little bit of a slowdown with a pit wall failure, but that is the normal production. Their mill uh, cutoff grade is 0.3 and their leach pad is about one, uh, 0.15 grams per ton. So they're operating at very low uh, levels of gold. So what we've got here is on this map, or on this picture, you can see the mine itself to the, to the northeast. Um, and, and importantly, you've got uh, you know, signs of placer mining in the area, and that's what drew everybody to this region was the, the placer mining. And just north of the Amanita property boundary, you can see that there is been placer mining really proximal to our project and, of course, uh, to Kinross. The yellow lines show the Tonsina mineralized trend. Uh, and that's a very important structural corridor uh, that has brought a lot of the gold onto our project itself. So we're going to look a little bit closer in that center area and where we've had a lot of success uh, in exploration over the last little bit, especially last year. So this is just a plan view of the area in which you can once again, you can see the Tonsina trend and you can see the area right into the center uh, that is really the heart of what we have found so far. But as you can see by other areas on that, uh, on that map, is that there's high grade gold uh, to the east in, in particular, but you can see it's concentrated to that one area. And we're talking you know, 50 to 100 gram type material. So we're gonna again look a little bit closer just at that center portion. So in this image, we've stripped away some of the, uh, you know, the, there was a lot of uh, information on that previous map. So we just stripped it down to the trench in which we, we did last year. Um, and you can see the results. We received 94.5 meters of three grams right at surface um, in, in the, the trench going to the north. The trench going towards the west, the east-west trench was 27 meters of 4.2 grams. So um, that's an incredible uh, difference. That's a you know, very high grade material over a good distance right at surface. So what we'd like to do for 2020 is, is get in there and, and looking, uh, look at drilling and trenching for 2020. So that would be something that uh, we would like to take on sooner rather than later. So we would see that uh, in the first half of the year. Um, we look at this, you know, being only four and a half kilometers away from Fort Knox. And if you know anything about mining, it, mines are big and they're hungry. And when you're doing 380,000 ounces per year, you're definitely going to be looking for incremental feed at some point in time. 
as I mentioned, they're operating on a, they're operating very low grade material. This would be something that would be a high grade uh, material that could easily be trucked the distance of four and a half kilometers up to the mine itself. Uh, previous drilling from the historical um, RC holes, you can see that there is obviously at depth, and these were very shallow holes in the range of about 100 to 150 meters, and it was all oxide uh, to that depth. Um, that you're seeing 13 meters of three grams, 12 meters of two and a half grams. So you've got you know good grade throughout. So it's it's incumbent upon us this year to follow up on this new area and and that you know start to do some drilling and, and get some information out. And and really we look at it as a potential for Fort Knox to hit a production gap uh, in 22, 23. So. We're targeting in that circled area somewhere between 500 and a million ounces, and we think that's quite reasonable and quite doable. Second project in Alaska is, is the, called the, the Golden Zone. It's, it's a very considerably large project. It's 15 kilometers east to west. Um, sorry, in north, northeast to southwest. On it is the historical Breccia pipe deposit, which has already got 300,000 ounces of gold uh, delineated. Um, and that sits within a mining lease, as you can see that red outline area, uh, which is valid until 2051. So that's important that there's already a, a mining lease in place. Uh, new mineralization, you can see some of the areas uh, we were receiving, uh, we, we got back good results, 21.5 or 21.6 meters or 1.46 grams. So you can, you can see that, uh, you know, good results uh, on the continuation of the Mayflower extension zone, that's the MEZ. And further to the south and to the west, the JJ, the J4 and the MJ, these are new discoveries that we've made over uh, the last uh, over the last exploration program in 20, uh, 2019. So, you know, there's there's smoke and there's fires and then there's bonfires and and we really look at this area here as that there's there's a number of big areas that could create very large resources. We think that three to five million ounces is quite doable. Um, and I think that you can see that the, the map is showing that there's you know, a lot of high grade gold uh, that we need to follow up on. Now a little bit to the south of where the Breccia zone pipe is, so you can see the Breccia, about five kilometers to the south is the, the Long Creek Corridor. Um, that's a substantial uh, exploration area. So this one, just a little bit of a zoom in uh, around the Breccia pipe where we do have the 300,000 ounces uh, in our 43101. And as you can see, trending off towards the northeast, you've got some good uh, results there, 17 meters of two grams, 21 meters or 1.46. So it continues in that, and that requires more follow-up drilling for sure. Now, if you're looking at, at the Golden Zone as the entire project itself, based on what we've got defined so far, the 300,000 ounces defined so far, our base case, um, you know, we are positive. But if you increase the price of gold, you're going to increase the, the, the profitability of the project. So it's, it's very much leveraged to the price of gold, as, as most projects are, but uh, this one especially. So just going back one more time to look at the golden zone, I mentioned that about five kilometers south of the Breccia pipe. Uh, this is an area that we, we really like um, and, and we're seeing uh, mineralized conglomerates and I think that that's gonna be key for a good discovery in this area. As you can see, some of the historical drilling, uh, nine meters of 8.71 grams, 30 meters of 2.24 grams. So it's, it's a really, uh, you know, prime, prime area for us to do exploration. This is where we are looking at our you know, potential much bigger discovery than at the Breccia Zone. We think the Breccia Zone at 300,000 ounces is great and we could spend money on it and maybe double it, but it's only gonna go from three to 600. If we spent that same amount of money and made a discovery down in this area here, we think that this is where you go from three to five million ounce potential. So, this is, uh, High Tide Resources is a private company that is about 60% owned uh, by Avidian. And 
We've got three projects in the province of Newfoundland and uh, Labrador, but I only really have time to speak about one, and we're going to speak about the Labrador West project. So we're going to be drilling in uh, Q1 2020, so the next uh, four to six weeks there's a drill campaign starting on that. Um, and then just the final slide right here is just why invest in gold, uh, Avidian Gold. Uh, we're experienced, uh, able to execute significant insider sharehold, uh, shareholders in and then we've got high quality US projects. At the end of the day though, that there is a lot of potential in all the projects, Golden Zone, Amanita, High Tide, we think there's approximately about 40 to $80 million uh, potential additional value for shareholders. Thank you.